there and welcome to the first Mate Science Easy Physics lesson. In this series, we're going to be taking you through everything that you need to know to pass your physics exams. In our first lesson on this topic, we're going to be looking at the measurement of length and time. Now, in fact, this is useful for all types of science, but it's especially true for physics. Now, a lot of the stuff we're going to cover in this lesson might seem quite obvious, but it's really, really important that you understand it because it forms some of the fundamental pieces of information and knowledge that you need to understand in order to pass your exams. Let's start by looking at the use of units. And physics involves lots and lots of numbers and lots of units. So this is a really important thing to understand. Now units help us to define things and give values to things. Now what this means is if I have an apple, for example, and I measure it, and I tell you this apple is 10, that's a meaningless statement. If I say this apple has a diameter of 10 centimeters, or this apple has a mass of 10 grams, be a very small apple, but then it gives meaning to things, it gives value to things. So units help us define different numbers. And we commonly add units when we measure length, time, and mass. But there are many, many things that we can measure to assign units to. So although length, time and mass are common, almost anything at all that we measure and we get a numerical value, we add a unit to. Now, when we measure length, for example, we have meters, centimeters, kilometers, millimeters, mile, feet, yards and inches as our units. When we have time, we have seconds, minutes, milliseconds, hours, days, years, weeks, and months as our units. And when we have mass, we have kilograms, grams, milligrams, tons, spelt T-O-N-N-E, pounds, ounces, a ton, spelt T-O-N, so the two tons are not the same. And we have stone. Now, if you notice, the units in bold, meters, seconds, and kilograms are more important than the others. These are what we call our SI units, and other units can be derived from them. This means that we can either divide or multiply them, and we get a slightly different unit. So centimeters come from meters. One centimeter is one hundredth of a meter. A kilometer comes from meters. One kilometer is one thousand meters. A millimeter comes from meters. One millimeter is one thousandth of a meter. Miles, feet, yards, and inches are not derived from meters. And because it's not derived from our SI unit, it's not a very good unit. So we don't use them in science. The same is true for time. We don't use months. It's not a good unit. If for mass, we don't use pounds, we don't use ounces, we don't use the ton, and we don't use stone because they're not derived from kilograms. We can also combine different units. So if we need a unit of speed, we need to combine a unit of length and a unit of time. So meters per second is a unit of speed, has a unit of meters and time combined. When we're talking about units and numbers, we're sometimes dealing with very small numbers in units, and we're sometimes dealing with very large numbers. So we need to be able to scale our units and our numbers to make them either very, very small or to make them very, very large. We can do this by adding a prefix and a symbol before a number to tell us if it's a very large number or a very small number. So we can see here, we have lots of prefixes and lots of symbols for different numbers. So if we have, for example, a kilogram, that is 1,000 grams. So we add a K before the gram and we have a kilogram. If we have a kilometer, we add a K before the symbol for meters and therefore we have 1,000 meters a kilometer. So we can see here in this table, there are lots and lots of different prefixes for either very, very large numbers or very, very small numbers. I'm not going to go through them all because you can see them. If you need to learn and understand them, you can just pause the video now and have a quick look at them. The only ones that you really need to use and use on a regular basis are mega, especially when we're talking about energy. So a mega joule, for example, would be one million joules or a mega what 
would be 1 million watts of power. We wouldn't really use a megagram, although that would in theory be a million grams. We're more likely to use a thousand kilograms. So mega we use on a regular basis, kilo we use all the time. So this means a thousand. We use deci quite often. This means a tenth. We use cent, so centimeter, one hundredth of a meter. So cent means one hundredth. We use milli, which means a thousandth. So a milligram, one thousandth of a gram. We use micro, which means a millionth. So a microgram, one millionth of a gram. And we might use nano, which means one billionth. So a nanometer, one billionth of a meter. So whenever you see a unit and you see a prefix in front of it, so a letter, it's telling you it's either a slightly bigger number or a slightly smaller number. And it's really important that you recognize what these numbers are telling you. So we now know the units for different things, but we also need to make sure that we can measure things correctly. So the majority of lengths up to one meter are measured using either a ruler or a rule. And although they look very similar, they are slightly different instruments. Rules measure to the very end of it. So the picture at the top, if you look, zero millimeters or zero centimeters is where it starts. A ruler has a small space at the end that cannot be used to measure. So if you look at the picture of the ruler here, at zero centimeters, there is a small gap to the left that cannot be used to measure. So very, very easy to use. You simply place your object at the end and you can see that this pencil is 18 centimeters long or 180 millimeters long. Sometimes, however, it's not going to be possible to use a ruler or a rule to measure something, perhaps because it's got an irregular shape. So this object here has a slightly irregular shape, so we can use something called calipers. We place our calipers on either side of our irregularly shaped object, and we close them until it is the same length as the object. We can then place a ruler next to our calipers, and we can measure the length. Sometimes using a ruler or calipers is not very good for measuring very, very small distances. So we need to use some different equipment. We need to use either a micrometer or a vernier scale. Here we can see a picture of a micrometer and it works by twisting the handle. As you twist the handle, it closes the bar in the middle until it's the same length as the object you are measuring. Or a vernier scale, which can be used just by closing the teeth until it's the same distance as the object you're measuring. So to use a micrometer, you close the object in and you then look at the scale. Now we can see that there are three lines exposed. Each of these lines is equal to half a millimeter. So this is telling us we have 1.5 millimeters. But the second scale is reading at 14. So this tells us that we have 0.1 four millimeters. So we add this all together and we end up with 1.640 millimeters. Each of the lines on the first part of the scale is worth half a millimeter. Each of the lines on the second part of the scale is worth 0 0.01 millimeters. So it is an incredibly accurate measurement. It can be used to measure very, very, very small distances. Our vernier is used in a similar way. So we can see here the first line where the zero is, is at 3.5. So we have 35 millimeters. If we look very carefully, we can see that the lines match up perfectly at three. So we have 0.3. So we have 35.3 millimeters. also important we know how to measure volume. Now volume is nearly always used using a measuring cylinder and we use this to measure liquids. Now liquids are poured into the measuring cylinder and the volume is measured in millimeters or in centimeters cubed. 
and one millimeter is the same as one centimeter cubed. Now, we also need to measure time on a regular basis. Now, time is obviously going to be measured using clocks or stop clocks. And clocks can either be analog or digital. So at the top, we can see an example of an analog clock. At the bottom, we can see an example of a digital clock. Now, analog clocks or watches use hands that need to be read. They're not usually accurate to more than one second. On the other hand, digital watches or digital stop clocks display numbers and they can be accurate to a millisecond, so 0.01 seconds. Finally, we're going to take a quick look at the importance of average values. Now, when we measure small values, there's something called a margin of error, and it's often a very large percentage of the overall value. So, in order to obtain an accurate reading, it's often important to take an average reading. So, let's take an example here. Let's have a look at a pendulum swinging. If we try to measure the period of one pendulum swing, it's incredibly challenging. It's really, really hard to measure it just once. But if we measure 10 swings of that pendulum, there is a much longer period of time. And because we're only taking two readings, a start and a stop, there are only two points of error. So there are two points of error, but there are 10 swings to the pendulum. This means the overall error is going to be much, much lower than if we try and measure one swing of the pendulum, but we still have two points of error at our start and our finish point. So 10 complete swings of this pendulum takes 36 seconds. So the period of one swing is 36 seconds divided by 10 because we have 10 swings which gives us a period of 3.6 seconds. It's much, much easier to determine an average value than it is to try and measure once we have a large error. So, in summary, units are frequently used in physics to help to define things. Length, time and mass are systems that are frequently given units, but there are more things that we will measure. We can scale units up and we can scale them down. Length is measured with a ruler. Irregular shapes can be measured with calipers. Very small distances can be measured with a micrometer or a vernier caliper. Most volumes are used with a measuring cylinder. Time is measured with either a digital clock or an analog clock. And we often need to take average values to obtain accurate readings. So I hope you now know a little bit more about units and about measurements. Until next lesson, keep on learning.